The Earnestly Speaking Podcast is a show that is founded on free-flowing conversation and may at times venture into mature subjects. Listener discretion is advised. Earnestly Speaking Podcast, coming to you July 18th, 2023, this Tuesday. A little later for Tuesday for us normally. Typically, I drop these in the you know late morning, early afternoon. But you know, uh, got a lot going on here. Um, actually, the reason why I couldn't get a pod earlier is because uh, my allergies right now. You can probably hear my voice a little bit. Almost prevent me from doing the podcast at all today. So I just took a med finally to clear this, you know clear this shit up. Uh, you, know, you know, every week, once a week, I have like a a, a, mass, a massive allergy attack. I know what it is. I woke up this morning sniffling, sneezing, snorting, that whole nine, and then all day, all day. So, again, this podcast all across all podcast catchers, Spotify, uh, Stitcher. Well, Stitcher, we'll talk about that in a second. Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, uh, Amazon Music, you name it. Also, check out my YouTube page, of course. Check out all the clips of all my shows I do um, on my YouTube page at youtube.com slash forward slash at Ernest Christian. If you love wrestling, of course, check, check out my uh, wrestling podcast, Takes the Wrestling Podcast. Um, a little bit of a somber start to the show today. Um, I'm going to get to that in a sec right now. Um, so it's been a little bit of a rough week so far to start. Um, I lost a friend uh, yesterday. Um, a friend of mine, Kevin Sanchez, who passed away uh, yesterday. Um, he was a friend. He wasn't a, a close friend or you know best friend, but he was a friend. I've known this guy for almost 20 years. Um, I had a rough Sunday as it is anyway. My car, my, my the family car wouldn't start. We, 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 so we had to wake up the next morning, Monday morning, to take it to the mechanic and a tow there. Tow truck calls us early in the morning, an hour and a half before we to be here, so it's coming now. So it threw up our threw up our entire morning out, out, the, out the shoot. Then about maybe about twenty minutes later, I was, I was still awake, so you know, screw it, I'm going to Facebook and check out what's on social media. See this message uh, or this. Uh, Facebook posts from someone that's not a mutual friend of my, of mine of of his, but someone that tagged him, and it says that you know something about like you know rest in peace and all that. I'm like what what what? So I did a little deep dive, went to his his page, and I started going through the list of people talking. And you see a bunch of people, a bunch of friends of his leaving um, condolences and whatnot, and it shows that my friend Kevin passed away. I was shocked. I don't, now, for the record, I don't know how he passed away. I don't know if it was health. I don't know if it was an accident. I don't know exactly. Because I say we we weren't necessarily like like BFFs and all that, and all that but we were good friends. We, you know, we we were friends. Um, we, we we met actually through our association of playing in bands. You know, in the mid early to mid two thousands. You know, I was in a rock band back, a metal band back then, and he was in a rock band too, also called Armada and One. And uh, Blindside, and we, it's a little community of people that you know you, you meet. Like some some people you, you're closer to, some people you're not. But you know we we, we met. Um, he became a decent friend. Um, he ended, actually ended up becoming closer because of uh, at my day job. Um, why why you know I've had I've been there for twenty years this year. He plays there. He plays poker there. So naturally, we exchange numbers and we exchange you know social medias. And through the years, he's been. We we've had great discussions on football and poker and music. Uh, he was a, he was a big Washington former Redskins fan. He's a big Heat fan. Loved basketball. Loved Jason Kidd. Um, we love ba- we love sports. We love sports. We, I mean, obviously loved uh, music. I say time music, especially too rock music, metal, the whole nine. Um, poker, of course. Uh, so we've always had conversations off and on. Like I said, wasn't my best friend, but we always checked in with each other and said, "Hey, how you doing? What's going on?" And you know, he'll 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 respond to my some of my messages or, or my or my um um uh posts on Facebook, you know, especially especially with sports related, weighed in a lot of good conversations there as well too. I think I spoke to him about a month ago. Um I think he hit hit a comment on, on there um during the NBA finals. Um and uh no, great guy. Great guy, very very calm, humble. Um no nonsense. I mean, he always been a very chill guy. Never had a never had a problem with him. I've never never heard anybody have his problem before. Um, but this, this one hit me though because 
we don't know how close we were. You know, you get to the age. You know, him and I were about the same age, same range. I think he might, he might be a little older than me, slightly. Um, but you start, like I said, I, in, in 30 years, especially on this show, I, I've, I've talked about this on the show so many times over. You know, you start losing friends and certain family members and this and that. You start looking at your own mentality. And, you know, no matter how big your your circle is, you know, sometimes people slip through the cracks and, you know, we and we get inundated in our own lives. And and, and, and that makes sense, especially when you have a family. You have, you have, you have bills to pay, you got to go for a job, you got kids and all that. Take kids to soccer practice, the whole night. We get all that. But... I've always said this, and I, and I keep getting reminders of this every time I get news of someone that I was either close to or someone's friends with or that passed away, you know, check in with your people. Check in on your people because you never know what people are going through. And I'm not saying you have to call said person every day or every week for that matter, but make sure you have a a, a, a line there where you know that people are okay. It's a strange world right, we're living in right now. I mean, and the thing is, too, also, it's it's easy to chunk people down because of social media. You know, all it takes is a, hey, what's up? Or a like, or whatever. And that's fine, too, also, to be honest with you. But check on your people, man. Always. Um, because you never know when you're going to see them again, or hear from them again. You know, Kevin's a good dude. He's a really good dude. And again, things like this, you know, always affect me and always uh, brings perspective on life in general. You know, you know, one of my best friends um, who, I who I just saw recently for the first time in a couple of years, actually, um, Eric, um, just had his first kid. We, we I, I saw him for the first time a couple of years, uh, weeks before that, uh, at his baby shower to him and his wife, uh, Samara. Congratulations, too, by the way, they had their first child uh, this like two weeks ago. You know, and they're doing well. Um, prior to that, I hadn't seen him before that. Prior to me seeing him was when his, his, his dad passed away and went to his funeral. And again, it's important to check in on your friends, you know, check in on your people. You know, it's easy to get wrapped up in life and everything else, but people are living and people are going through, it, through things, and you never know. Like I said, you just never know what's going to happen. You're always going to get thrown a curveball. You know, so... Just check on your people, man. Just make sure you're, you know, you, you at least keep an eye out, you know. Don't get so inundated on work and and life that it, you know, distracts you from the things that matter. Friends matter. Family matters, you know. And try to prioritize that, always. So, I say that with a heavy heart. Uh, rest of power to my, my friend, Kevin Sanchez. Talented guy. Nice guy. Great guy, um, passed away um, uh, yesterday. So, rest in peace, my brother. We love you. We're gonna miss you, and you know, there's that. So, no good way to say out of that um, as we uh, go through this podcast today. Um, but there is a little bit of Damian Lillard update. Uh, no trades happened yet. Um, for what what we're hearing right now. Actually, I'll play a clip here real quick of Sham Sharania um, and giving he, he gives an update on what's going on with the uh, Dame Lillard, Miami Heat possible trade situation. It's been stagnant as far as the process there, and it's, it's really up to the Blazers and the Heat. That, the Heat are the team that Damian Lillard wants to go to, and what I'm told Portland has told Miami is this. Make your best offer to us. And the sides have spoken recently, but nothing significant has come to it. And when you look at potential packages from Miami to Portland, you look at expiring contracts, perhaps a young player like Nikola Jovic, three to four first-round picks where Tyler Hero would be going to a third team. That third team would send one or two first-round picks to Miami, and they, they would you know add their two first-round picks as well, potentially second-rounders, swaps as well. So for someone with Damian Lillard's contract, four years, over $210 million left on his deal— for a rebuilding team like Portland, that's a pretty sound get. But if you think about all those first-round picks, other assets you can get, potentially a young player as well, that's sound value. But so far, Portland has not uh, elected to to really engage with Miami uh, and, and try to solicit. It's been yeah. Um, so there's really no traction, really. Um, but I still maintain that this is the only deal on on the table. 
you know, for all the talk about Philadelphia and probably Boston and other teams. And I got a read rating last week on the podcast about how like people say, this is the worst deal ever. I can't say it's the worst deal because it, it might be the only deal in play now. Because clearly the only teams that are really quote unquote talking are Miami and Portland. So clearly there's a streamline to the two. It's figuring out who's going to blink first, who's going to give up more assets to get the asset. And the last report, like I said, we, we discussed on the podcast, um, I believe uh, it was either the last one or the one before that, was that Portland won four draft picks, four, four first round draft picks. Miami was offering three. And Tyler Hero, of course. So I don't know. Obviously, this is going to stand for a while. we got a lot of time. Look, it's, we're still in mid July. You know, basketball camp is open until late September. <laughs> you know, so we have a lot of time ahead of us. Um, I don't foresee. I, I look, I think this ends by August. I think at some point by August, it comes to a head. It's clear what Damian Lillard wants. Miami has offered a table. It's, a, in my opinion, a good offer. I know people say, oh, well, you're a heat fan. No, no, no. It's a good offer. Take it and move on. You know, especially the fact that you want to rebuild. You know, you have your – having this situation over, over your head throughout the season is really, really good for the team in general, especially a young team with Scoot Anderson, Scoot Anderson being the now the, you know, number one priority now going forward. Not a good thing to have hanging over your head. So I, I think this will end sooner rather than later, um, but we shall see how that plays out. We shall. But uh, like I said, um, I, think, I think this will end at some point. I, I, I'm going to predict by August this will be over. And they will remember Miami Heat. I don't see other teams that get involved because, like I said, I, I think all of this is posturing at the end of the day, seeing which team blinks. And right now, Miami is, is, stay, is staying put on, on what they've offered. Portland right now is saying no, and we move from there. All right. By the way, um, for the record, um, I'm a Shams guy over Woj any day of the week. For the record, just saying. Anyway, um, I mentioned Stitcher Radio on top of the show um, because Stitcher Radio apparently is closing its doors. So later this summer, I'm going to read it for the article from Variety. Later this summer, Stitcher, one of the biggest podcast listening apps, will be going silent after about 15 years. The Stitcher apps and web streaming audio service will be shutting down on August 29th, 2023, according to the notice posted to its site Tuesday. In the Stitcher farewell notice, the service explains in its way in this way, quote, Sirius XM, the owner of Stitcher, is focused on incorporating podcasts into its flagship Sirius XM subscription ba- business. Its flagship... Um, Subscribers can listen to podcasts within the Sirius XM app and we'll be seeing on all new listening experience later this year. First of all, I didn't realize Sirius XM actually bought them. Um, continues, the Stitcher name isn't totally disappearing, though the company said it expects to continue to operate our Stitcher studios and Earwolf networks that produce original content shows. Original, original podcast shows, rather. Uh, in most cases, according to Sirius XM, podcast fans will still be able to listen to ad supported versions of the shows that have been on Stitcher on other platforms. Now, this feels like an error for me because when I started podcasting in 2011, I remember doing you know a lot of research about how to do a podcast and how a podcast even exists and all that. And the two like things that stood out to me, like in terms of hosting a podcast, or not necessarily hosting a podcast, but a third party, obviously Apple. Apple, which back then was called iTunes. And then, of course, Stitcher Radio. So Stitcher Radio was a, a very big uh, part of the show in 2011 when I first started doing the show. Like, I actually would, for those early days, I would promote the show, even though he had the Apple, you know, people had Apple. I was still, I always found the Stitcher Radio, you know, software and the entire platform very user-friendly. So I would always promote that. Um on you know to my to my people on my shows I would promote, my, promote the episodes for example I would, I would promote the Stitcher Radio part. In the three years you know I've you know I've always said you know you heard it on the top of the show I always promote, promote the different platforms we're on. And Stitcher Radio is always part of that, and Stitcher Radio always became one of those things where like you know you know I I I don't never pay much attention to it in recent years. I've always because it's almost like by routine I to say Stitcher Radio because I've been saying it for so long now Stitcher Radio and because it, it's part of it's part of the routine it's part of my whole thing. So to get the news that they're, they're shutting down, you know, it's, it's a little shock. It's also a little bit of sweet, you know, because it, it, it takes you back to that time when I first started doing this, this medium, 12 years ago, you know. And Stitch Radio was a, a, a big part of that. Um, so, you know, just it's just a little shocking. But also it, it also tells you the times are changing as well, too. And, you know, since in the, in the last 10 years, last five years, really, you've, you've seen Spotify get into the, into the act now. You've seen Amazon Music into the act now. And, 
all these big conglomerate companies are getting involved in the podcast game, you know. So naturally, Stitch Radio wouldn't be as prevalent, even though SiriusXM bought them out uh, years ago. You know, but uh, yeah, as recipe said, Stitch Radio, uh, August 29th, they said, is, is, is the last uh, the day the last day before it sh- shuts down. Um, like I said, a lot of memories, man. There's a lot of memories from Stitch Radio back in those days. You know, anyway, I was listening to uh, Dan, the Dan Patrick show uh, yesterday, or today actually, but it was yesterday's episode. Uh, not the entire show, just like, you know, clips. Cause I, so, as, as I tell you, on these sports radio shows, I just do it clips as opposed to the whole show because I have time. And my nose is all stuffy, I'm sorry. They actually got into a, 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 a debate with uh, Dan and the Danettes discussing whose concert would you rather go to or attend. You have one ticket. You have a ticket for Taylor Swift and a ticket for Beyonce. It's just you. Which concert would you would you go to? Would you, would, would you choose? Would you, would you choose Taylor Swift would you choose Beyonce? And most of the panel picked, t- picked Taylor Swift. We're not surprised, of course. Um, but I gotta tell you, you know, I, you know, I, I, I'm gonna be honest here. Both these artists don't really do anything for me personally. Like, I, I, I think both are really great what they do. I think Taylor Swift has a lot of catchy songs, and I, I, I do like her. I think she's she's, she's a really genuine, genuine person, great artist, you know, good writer. She has a lot of, uh, uh, you know, she she has a lot of, you know, beating the game in terms of like creating her own content and creating her own music. You know, she writes her own music, which is good. Beyonce loved her early stuff, uh, her first album or two. Uh, cooled off of her for many years. I like some of her recent stuff to some degree. Maybe the maybe the Lemonade album, but never really been a, a big Beyonce person in the same way. Like she's good, she's great, but her music doesn't really impact me in the same way. As you know, by artists, let's do the bands of the two in the same way. But I do recognize her talent. I've also said that Beyonce, for, for the credit, to her credit, in my opinion, is the best living entertainer in the world today. You know, obviously, my, you ask me my all time is, is, is Michael Jackson, but to be living entertainer today, to me, it's, it's between Beyonce and Bruno Mars. I think Beyonce is the best living entertainer today. So, but if you ask me who I, what, what concert I would attend, Probably Beyonce, um, because I probably know more of her music. Number one, I think I also probably enjoy her shows more because uh, of uh, as as the entertainer she is, the performer she is. I think she would provide more of entertainment value for me personally than say a Taylor Swift. It's not a knock on Taylor Swift, of course. Like I said, I've heard people say I've heard friends of mine tell me that you know going to a Taylor Swift concert is a life changing thing. I don't necessarily disagree with that because it, it gets, that's you know music is, gener- is, gener- is generalistic G- music is it, it's it's all about what your taste is you know I I personally think Metallica is more fun to, to see a concert than Taylor Swift but people are not going to agree with that and that's fine you know um, and I think Taylor I think Taylor is good uh, is good what she does um, I just if, if I'm given the opportunity to see either of these artists and for the record not necessarily, I'm not necessarily sure I, I would pay for any of these two, honestly, my, my, well, my own money, because number one, again, I'm not huge fans of either of these artists in the in the same way where I would go out of my way to watch see a concert, you know. Plus, I'd rather see bands anyway. I'm, I'm a big, bigger band person, than if anything. Um, but I'd probably go Beyonce, because I know her material more. I, th- I feel like the, the stuff I've seen of her live, She's definitely more entertaining. I, to, actually, to be honest, with you, I I have technically seen Beyonce live before, but I saw her with Destiny Child. It was a set. I saw her at the Michael Jackson 35th anniversary concert in 2001, and they did like a couple songs there. But it wasn't a whole concert. But I saw her live. <laughs> so technically, I, did, I, I have seen her live before. But uh, sorry. Um, uh, yeah, I would probably choose Beyonce. People can say, "Oh, this is race thing." It's not a race thing at all. Not at all. Uh, but none of these two really do anything for me musically. But it was actually a good debate on Dad Patrick's show. Uh, goes to show you, though, that uh, we're in a time of year now where it's uh, nothing to talk about. <laughs> Sports is kind of like dead period now. It's just dry. It's just baseball. Basketball's ended. Uh, football is still around the corner. So you got to make up topics. Anyway, I want to keep this episode relatively short and sweet because I will be taking a week away from the podcast. Although, you're not going to know that or notice it because, yes, even though I'll be away, uh, 
not releasing new content. There will be content dropping on the feed in the coming week, um, as I'm going to be uh, actually tonight recording. And, and like I said, shifting now into from basketball and all that stuff, not to football. Football season, season started to creep up little by little. So we're going to do uh, my, myself and the rest of the Hull Up podcast crew that I, I join every Tuesday during the season. Um, Big Jim, myself, Kyle Nash, uh, um, Matt Melison, and of course, uh, Mikey B. We're going to be um, r- ranking um, our all the quarterbacks. We're going to do a power ranking style, ranking all the quarterbacks in, the, um, in, the, in each conference. Um, there'll, be, there'll be an AFC episode and an NFC episode. So I'm going to drop the first one, I believe, on Thursday this week. And then the WNFC episode, most likely. And then the second episode will, will drop most likely either Sunday or next Tuesday. We haven't decided yet exactly. Um, but I'm going to be away for a week just to get to recharge the energy, like I said, because, we, you know, obviously it's summertime and there's not much going on. And, you know, take advantage of the time to recharge the energy because, you know, obviously you know how I get, especially with the with the fall. You know, in addition to this podcast, you know, I still do take the wrestling every Thursday, Thursday night, Friday morning, release those episodes. That's still dedication. That's still dedicated to that as well. Um, and then, of course, Hull Up Podcast is a, is a priority as well every Tuesday now. So I got to make sure I'm, you know, spending my energy wisely. And, of course, you know, I also do on top of that guest versions of the podcast throughout the year and all that. And maybe I'll have other things I'm, I'm working on as well, too. So this is the time of year where I start to kind of, you know, get off, the, get off the gas a little bit and just kind of lay back and see what's going on. Um, if there's, like, a, a, a big story, let's say Dame Lillard gets traded in the next week or so, then I'll do an emergency podcast. If something happens... Somewhere, something big happens, something in politics that's huge, or something happens that, you know, in sports that's huge, that's worth me j- jumping here and doing a quick, you know, five, ten minute a reaction podcast, I'll do that. Otherwise, I'm going to take this time to relax, catch up some content. I'm actually going to watch the, uh, I'm, I'm going to start trying to binge tomorrow the show, uh, the new show. I've been hearing really good stuff about it on Netflix, the um, the quarterbacks, uh, the show on Netflix, quarterbacks. 10 piece documentary or whatever you want to call that on um, there. I want to watch that. I'm also going to watch that George Michael or Wham documentary. I've been hearing about too. Also, hopefully next month I'll have some a guest lineup for that to discuss music and, and that documentary as a whole too. Um, we got a nice August lineup also a nice little August lineup. We got a couple of uh, shows planned out for August as well too, as even though we're still, we'll still be in a slow season. We'll be in the middle of NFL preseason, of course, and all that good stuff. But um, we'll have, we have, I have a lot of good content planned for you guys. Something similar to what we did last week with you know with the, the top ten co- comedian rankings, um, and I promise you on an episode we said we had teased that we're going to try, try to do a top ten Eddie Murphy uh, episode with those two those, those two guys Rob Arnett and DJ Vincer. We're going to try to record that probably next month as well too. So uh, it's going to be a good, it's going to be a nice little summer to, to ride out here before we get into the meat and potatoes of the fall when football comes back and college football is running and all that. So I'm going to take this time to just relax, some time with family, catch up on content. Um, you can follow me on, t- on social media, of course. If you want to see anything I'm talking about on social media, Twitter, each Christian seven on Twitter, um, Ernest underscore Christian on either Instagram or Threads. Which Threads I haven't really, I, I'm on there, but I haven't really made it a priority yet. Um, but yeah, we'll be back with new episodes next week. Like I said, if, if it comes up um, last minute that uh, we got to talk about, we will definitely break it down on here. Um, react to it, but otherwise, I'm gonna take this time to relax. Look out for the feed, though. We'll be going away. We'll have stuff prepared for you guys here to listen to like i said um but anyway i am on uh, i I, I said twitter so that's all good we'll talk soon um and uh, as i enjoy this time away from the show so talk to you guys later god bless y'all and see ya Thank you.